you guys are doing blockchain? Yes? Okay, so I just want to know from your experience what are the challenges that you guys faced before working on blockchain and after working on blockchain? Okay, yes. Hello. Well, uh, we are working in uh, blockchain. We started to work on not, not the real uh, blockchain as it's known nowadays. We started working with some more uh, Blockchain based on cryptography, but not in a certain way, to immutabilize all the transactions that were used for internet voting. Uh, the idea was that uh, to provide uh, the, the transactions for the auditors, and so everybody can see that all the transactions of the election uh, can be manipulated during the election, and then auditors uh, can check that nobody is trying to eliminate uh, any attempt uh, of making fraud. This was pretty early in 2004, and now that we are trying to make this uh, in the current blockchain in a distributed way, we start to work on different blockchains that are public. Uh, and in this case, our, our objective is putting these transactions, this information, in a way that is more auditable for, for everybody. No, it's, it's still in our, our case, we did not use it yet in any environment in any real election is something that we see that uh, good potential because it's giving not only transparency, not only something important that is in an election that is to allow everybody to audit what is happening in uh, the voting process, but also because uh, you cannot control this. The, in, the, in the previous cases, the, what happens is that everything was under our control and this always generates this doubt, saying, okay, yes, but at the end, you are managing this information. And this is one of the elements that we are using nowadays uh, and we are promoting uh, for giving more transparency to the voting process. Okay, great. So we, we don't have a default blockchain because we start by right away like default blockchain because that was the tool we did. And uh, our challenges, I think they can be just summarized with basically like how can we make this technology is so awesome accessible to the smartphone and try and make in ways and how can we make a way uh, as simple as, as sending a chat, right? Um, and of course that derived from so many other problems, such as scalability, right? Um, how can we make, like, it's easy to make 10 people work on one chain, how can we make 10 million people work on one chain, right? Or an easy way, right? Do you need a computer um, to, to create the proof that, to anonymize your code? Or, or can you use it to do it at one right? Um, so, and then all the education, right? There is uh, all these side, different ways to, 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 to deal with technology, with blockchain, when you're doing with keys, for example, right? That uh, go against like what users uh, are, are used to. Um, they're, they're used to uh, delegate responsibility to certain authorities, right? And, and, some way we we regret that. Uh, so we need to re-educate the user or provide the necessary tools to enable secure uh, process. 
So for me, a summary would be just using the key that's the main color. Oh, you know, easy we had no before as well. And we started to change the things you can We developed that for the interface labs, let's say, from the beginning of this year. We developed last year to present it for that. And our, our challenge was reproducing a kind of election that the same kind of we have in Brazil to reproduce the usability, the, 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 how, how to manage the, the election to for people having the same feel, not, not changing the way we are doing the votes. They identify themselves, they go they do both the place, but they identify themselves on an app and we try to prove who is the person who is voting, open the session, vote, close the session, and count automatically the votes so on chain. And it's very important to, to have the secret, the secrecy of the end rights of all votes. Everything's being counted all, all the time. So, probably those are the challenges we try to solve. So, uh, do you guys shuffle the vote on chain? Do you guys do the uh, identification as well? Or do you just um, send the transaction on chain, whatever transaction you had before, for example, in your case, you were working on the voting systems before? And basically, um, were is the blockchain intervening? At which stage is the blockchain intervening? Are you guys, you know, from, from the beginning, all the identification process is not on the blockchain? Is the software the shuffling on the blockchain? Or it's uh, the votes that I just stamped on the, on the chain? Yes. <clears throat> In our case, uh, uh, the main user of the blockchain is participating from the beginning, but from more from the point of view of uh, political putting public information that can be used for nothing. All the power, for instance, uh, all the privacy of the tools, it's more based of chain, it's based on the protocol, because at the end, uh, one of the things, one of the limitations that we see in a blockchain is that uh, you can, from our point of view, uh, you can 100% uh, protect the privacy. At the end, you are storing votes, are encrypted, but the same encryption of the vote is a so, uh, at some how you need to also preserve this privacy, not only in the blockchain, but also on chain. And in this case, we are using many uh, cryptographic protocols like MixNet, or homomorphic tally, that are done off chain, and then the results of this and all the cryptographic proofs that, that is used for checking that everything that is in the blockchain is, and the results are correct is what we publish again in the, in the blockchain. So, it's more uh, thinking about the blockchain as a public place that you can put all the information for auditing. However, we are delegating the blockchain all the processes that are not related to the privacy of the voters or the generation of all, all the auditing. So, for you, blockchain is it's, it's not the core, it's not the core technology. It's an extra that you use to store information online and that information will be available for. Uh, for everyone, and this is how you see blockchain. Do you see it? Do you see this evolving uh, in the near future, or do you, are you are you happy with this? Now? No, I, I think uh, I think that it's difficult. There are some parts of the blockchain that I think that are, are difficult to do. For instance, all the decryption part. It's uh, unless you are delegating the private keys in the blockchain then you cannot implement this cryptographic part in the blockchain and, and then when you are delegating this private piece in the blockchain is when you have the risk that there is a collision and then can be the vote. So there are some things that we think that, that maybe cannot still uh, unless appear something uh, that can be uh, delegated to the blockchain. But in any case we think that it's possible if to have this blockchain for other users and it's a matter maybe of time. You know? But in the meantime uh, we think that that can be used as well. For us, it's actually very clear. Um, in your case, the only thing that happens outside the blockchain is uh, the KYC, the, the, the verification of that a certain identity can vote. Um, after that, the entire process uh, for us is, is critical to be trustless, and that means from the moment that the user votes to the moment that the, the results are computed, it should be verifiable. 
and you know, solution is on is on is on the phone. Right. Which blockchain are you guys using? So uh, the system we designed could run any blockchain that has not for virtual machine that right now we might be in Ethereum. Um, but because uh, we can make things so much convenient, um, the, there is only part of that that you uh, uh, can and the other part is on a on a proof of a uh, first that we run. And now with the idea that in the future, what are we creating this to Sorry? Yep. If you mean it, uh, or actually decentralizing our blockchain as well, with its own uh, government without. But it's the, the reason we're using a proof of coin right now is just for convenience to develop and iterate as the, we, we can enable the same transparency properties as, as it was happening, and we just don't have the same resilience. And in our case, because we also have blockchain voting actually, it's, we built an entire uh, protocol from scratch. So it's three really different, different, uh, different approach. We built an entire chain with a different consensus mechanism that we think is more suitable for voting because we think that the consensus mechanism and the chains that are built right now are constraining when it comes to make sure that everything is transparent and everything is fair. So we built an entire chain from scratch. And on top of that chain, so these guys can, for example, come and build on our chain, and you can build like other apps, like supply chain apps or other type of apps. Um, so have like three different, three different approach. And um, my last question was, what do you guys think about? If, I mean, do you think that because we thought that maybe it's not because because we spent a lot of time researching on our, our chain? But do you guys think that if you or if you're passing or any existing chain could be Training for your product to develop and to improve. Like if we talk about scalability or if we talk about safety, what do you think about um, you know financial incentivized access? What do you think about miners? What do you think about uh, you know the, 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 the uh, how do you say the, sorry the, uh, the efficiency and the scalability of these chains? Yeah, I think the scalability and costs. We are very aware about that, and uh, we are using right now the classic and but the solution could be uh, built on top of any kind of blockchain who runs the smart contracts because it's a protocol. So the protocol can be run in any kind of, of blockchain who runs uh, as a pre complete and run, uh, runs uh, smart contracts. And on our case, we have the prototype running. Last year, we did the, the election of the Brazilian Tax Association. For the tax, they voted on the new board, but they used some kind of open election. Private, private, uh, secret election, and that's why we built the new protocol for doing private, private sessions on uh, election. Okay, interesting. Uh, in our case, um, we're using Ethereum right now to publish the, the basically augment, augment the data that, that uh, all the other rules set for, for a specific voting, right? So that means like uh, the, the census, the, 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 the deadlines, etc. And uh, we run on a different blockchain to publish itself. If we decided to run the, the process, the voting itself, in the Ethereum blockchain, we have a solution, which is basically we can aggregate votes into uh, a single transaction, right? We put 10,000 votes in a single transaction without using the, the trust chain, right? So, in the worst case scenario where there is an ICO and there's like a great big uh, friend and everything is stuck, if you just can get to like a couple of transactions, that would be enough for the process to resolve correctly. So if it's not a big deal, just go to your own place, you can go to it. I'd be very happy actually to talk to you guys because we, we host, because we built our own app, but we don't think necessarily that our app is the best. Um, the guys are interested in the way they do it, and they're analyzing the way to do it, and if you guys can do it better, we'd be, happy, we'd be more than happy to have you guys on our ecosystem and try to do so. It's really three different type of solutions, different, three different approaches. And uh, yeah, I think for the questions we would need to uh, take them one by one after because I think we're working every day. But thank you so much for uh, being here and taking part of this. Yeah.